It is now in order to consider amendment number 44, printed in Part B of House Report 118-551. For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 44, printed in Part B of House Report number 118-551, offered by Mr. Clyde of Georgia. Pursuant to House Resolution 1287, the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Clyde, and a member opposed will each control five minutes. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I rise today in support of my amendment, which relocates the Reconciliation Monument, sometimes referred to as the Reconciliation Memorial, back to its original location in Arlington National Cemetery. And I'm very grateful for the support of Chairman Rogers on this amendment. Under the direction of President Biden, the Reconciliation Memorial was removed on December 18, 2023. This monument in Arlington was a powerful symbol of the healing and unification of our nation after the deep divisions of the Civil War. American leaders like President Abraham Lincoln and Union General Ulysses Grant knew that a divided nation could not stand, and they tirelessly worked on promoting reconciliation. In 1898, following the end of the Mexican-American War, President McKinley undertook a process to create greater national unity. In 1906, President McKinley authorized the construction of the Reconciliation Memorial. Unveiled in 1914 by President Woodrow Wilson, this monument, designed by a Jewish-American sculptor, features a woman crowned with an olive wreath, symbolizing peace. For over a century, presidents of both parties have understood the purpose of this memorial of reconciliation and have honored it by sending wreaths to the monument. This tradition showing national unity and respect has been carried on regardless of the party or politics of the sitting president. Even President Obama understood the reconciliation monument in the context of what it stands for. Unity, not division when he continued on the presidential tradition of sending a wreath to the monument. In doing so, presidents have continued to emphasize the message of this monument, reconciliation and unity, not division. Former Democrat Senator Jim Webb, a highly decorated Marine Corps officer and former Secretary of the Navy, has strongly supported the preservation of the Reconciliation Memorial because the monument is one of the most potent symbols of healing in our nation and across the globe. Democrat Senator Webb has said that the statue's removal would signify the desire of, and I quote, a deteriorating society to erase the generosity of its past in favor of bitterness and misunderstanding conjured by those who do not understand the history they seem bent on destroying. That's his quote. And now I'd like to share a little of this monument's history. When this monument was originally dedicated back in 1914, Dr. Reverend Dr. McKim pronounced these words within his invocation. And as the blue and the gray mingle their dust on this consecrated hill, may the men of the north and the men of the south join hands and hearts in the labors and sacrifices which must be undertaken in the years to come for the honor, the happiness, and the glory of our country. Grant also, O Lord, that this monument may stand as a perpetual memorial of the reconciliation between the people of the states once arrayed against each other in deadly conflict. Men who once met in wrath on the field of battle meet here today as friends and brothers in the great enterprises of peace. Henceforth, we pray the labor for the good and the glory of our reunited country. We have beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. Ours it shall be to strive in fraternal emulation with our northern brothers, all in all undertakings for the common weal, meaning the common prosperity. President Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, had these words to say at the ceremony. I assure you that I am profoundly aware of the solemn significance of the thing that has now taken place, meaning the dedication of the Reconciliation Monument. It was suggested by a president of the United States who himself had been a distinguished officer of the Union Army. It was authorized by an act of Congress of the United States. The cornerstone of the monument was laid by a president of the United States, elevated to his position by the votes of the party, which had chiefly prided itself upon sustaining the war for the Union, and who, while Secretary of War, had himself given authority to erect it. And now it has fallen to my lot to accept in the name of the great government, which I am privileged for the time to represent, this emblem of a reunited people. Again, I say, this emblem of a reunited people.
Last year, I led a similar amendment which passed the House floor by voice with no opposition prior to the removal of the monument. So I ask that all members support the adoption of my amendment to return the Reconciliation Mor Memorial to the grounds of Arlington National Cemetery. In doing so, we can maintain a critical piece of our national unity and fill the empty spot that now exists in Arlington. Let us unite against the destruction of our history and let us fight for the principles of healing and unity, which is exactly what this memorial was created to accomplish. Thank you, and I reserve. Time has expired. General Lady from Virginia is recognized. I rise to claim, claim the time in opposition to this amendment. General Lady is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, and I yield uh, three minutes to the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Byer. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized for three minutes. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, I rise in firm opposition to this retrograde revanchist amendment. Today is not the 1920s, is not the 1950s, so it's so disheartening to see a lost cause amendment come before the House in the year 2024. Mr. Clyde is proposing that we return a monument to treason to our national cemetery without any accompanying context or education. The monument in question is a basic ode to the Confederacy, to romanticize the lost cause. It is not, the more troubling than that is that it also glorifies slavery. It is not an emblem of a reconciled people. An enslaved woman is depicted as a mammy. She is holding the infant child of a white officer, and an enslaved man is following his owner to war. It is very difficult to see how the humiliating betrayal of a slave woman and a slave man represents reconciliation. The Arlington National Cemetery, on Congress's orders, not President Biden's orders, removed this monument on December 22, 2023. This amendment is four, if not four score years too late. The NDAA for 2021 required that Arlington National Cemetery remove the Confederate States of America monument. I think it's important to remember why we removed the memorial in the first place, because treason in defense of slavery is no virtue. Let's this is a monument to a cause that killed hundreds of thousands of American servicemen in a doomed attempt to tear this country asunder to preserve the practice of keeping our fellow humans in bondage. The cause of the Confederacy is no more honorable today than when Lee surrendered at Appomattox. Let it lose today as it did then, with a whimper. The monument has been handled responsibly and respectfully according to the National Historic Preservation Act. This would also be a horrible waste of taxpayer money, and in no way does it support our national defense. It would only make the families and visitors to the Arlington National Cemetery, including our current service members, rightfully uncomfortable or hurt by the association of the monument. This NDA should be focused on supporting the service members currently dedicating their lives to this country, not those who came closest to destroying it. I urge you to vote no if you believe you represent the United States of America, not the Confederate States of America, and if you oppose glorifying slavery and treason. Madam Speaker, I yield back. Thank you. The, I reserve the balance and of my the, time. I, the chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Virginia. I reserve the balance of my time. Uh, you have the only remaining time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I rise to oppose this amendment as well. After the Civil War ended, Robert E. Lee himself argued against the erection of monuments to the Confederacy because he recognized that those monuments rather than I invite you to read what he said about proposed monuments in Gettysburg, proposed monuments to Thomas uh, to Stonewall Jackson. He said they would more likely retard the reunion and binding and reconciliation of the North and South than help it. But many of these monuments, including this one, weren't put up right after the Civil War. They were put up after Reconstruction ended. And during Reconstruction, formerly enslaved people for the first time began to gain social, political, and economic power. And when Reconstruction ended and the old Confederate power structure came back in the South, three things happened. Through the use of voter suppression, racial terror, and propaganda, efforts were made to say to black Americans who finally started to gain in the promise of our founding documents, stay in your place. 
The lost cause narrative was part of that. Many of these monuments were a part of that. And they were put up in response to Reconstruction, in response to the gains of the Civil Rights Movement, and we're in that backlash, frankly, right now. When this monument was placed, the gentleman said it was for reconciliation, but for who? Not for the black Americans who saw that monument then and even today and see the images of a mammy and a loyal slave following his master into battle. And they know what that means. It conjures up the <coughs> stereotypes that were used to help build the lie of white supremacy. The stereotypes that were used to help convince black people to stay in their place. And that is part of why the commission said this monument should come down and why this amendment should be defeated. The gentlewoman's time has expired. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. Madam Chair, we request a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on, from, on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Georgia will be postponed.